to everyone world over green morning green afternoon green evening all our brothers and sisters in different countries in different continents in different time zone in different conditions in different health and wellness conditions first of all we pray to almighty that you all should be safe fine and taking care of yourself your neighbors your community your society your civilization and all the people those are directly or indirectly associated with you ladies and gentlemen wishing you all a belated happy new year today is a wonderful day it is 12th of january 2021 and it's a proud privilege that today we are taking you to a beautiful continent and we are moving to australia today ladies and gentlemen and when we are in australia it's afternoon post lunch around 232 in the afternoon and in india is 3 minutes past 9 am and in different countries it's a different time zones you are in different conditions but let's come to the positivity think positive talk positive behave positive everything positive we have to work out and this morning we have got a very distinguished guest with us dr manoj chandra handa ji is a principal education officer he is a learning teaching and leading coordinator new south wales department of education in sydney australia we extend him a very warm welcome this morning and we have got a wonderful subject creative by choice not by a chance the art of looking sideways So, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the journey with him. Today is the 565th webinar, making education relevant. We started on 25th of March, and we have come a very long way. We crossed 500 webinars on 31st December, and now we are in 565. And our vision and our pledge is that Bharat ke swatantrata divas par 15 August tak. we would be crossing we would be sharing the knowledge the wisdom the skill the education expertise pedagogies andragogies empowering education what shall you want to talk about and then of course creativity today we will be touching 1000 plus figure this program is live on the gs motivator channel that is youtube channel is going live over there so you are more than welcome wherever you are world over be a part of it do join us and hearty welcome to all of you ladies and gentlemen our chamber because in india 1994 you know punjab always takes a lead initiative punjabis have gone world over they are quite creative vibrant innovative productive what shall you talk about so 1994 the first punjabi parvasi divas started in india and that was international punjabi chamber for service industry and then 10 years passed and late prime minister of india shri atul bihari vajpayee ji he called a meeting and over there we made a presentation and the honorable prime minister gave a vision that punjabi parvasi divas is a wonderful idea what you people are doing getting all the indian diaspora together on a common platform why not we should start bhartiya parvasi divas and he asked when do you celebrate punjabi parvasi divas and everybody in one voice like a chorus sir it is 13th of january because it's a happy lohri festival which is a very big celebration in punjab he said great then he took a pause like he was he used to think for a while and then he used to speak and he said 9th of january will be bhartiya parvasi divas everybody looked left right what exactly is that he said 9th of january mahatma gandhi ji returned from south africa to india in 1915 who would be a better diaspora or a nri than mahatma gandhi ji and from their ladies and gentlemen 2003 onward along with punjabi parvasi divas bhartiya parvasi divas also started the rest is the history we all know now there is a vibrant gujarat vibrant rajasthan vibrant telangana vibrant karnataka everything is vibrant vibrant and vibrant 
And we all understand that uh, last year in 2020, the world has passed through a very difficult time. All of us, we had so many challenges and our doctors, our nurses, our paramedical, they have done a great job. They're great warriors. But at the same time, people, those are associated in education ecosystem, they are not, they are, they are not less than anybody else. And that's why our series, which we started on 25th of March, the day lockdown, complete lockdown was there, making education relevant. And also Monday to Sunday, no holiday in between. You can't imagine the kind of a beaming which we had been having world over in all continents, in almost all countries, 159 countries we have touched during this pandemic world over. Now, 16th Parvasi Bharti Divas was held just three days back. That is on 9th of January 2021. There were five curtain raiser conferences and the Honorable Prime Minister of India inaugurated the Parvasi Bharti Divas. And now as we mentioned to you that 1994 we started with Punjabi Parvasi Divas. The next Punjabi Parvasi Divas is tomorrow. And that is when we talk about 27th Punjabi Parvasi Divas on Happy Lodi Festival. And it's going to be an international virtual conference, Punjabi Parvasi Divas 2021, empowering Punjab. And the most important thing is, don't give anything to anybody. No money, nothing is required. Just give desirable, needful education to someone. Education, skills, MSME, finance, health, wellness, and water management. These are some of the areas we will be touching tomorrow. And you'll be so happy to know. We always believe that there has to be something different from others. Tomorrow with the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Government of India, Wellness Council, Sector Skill Council is with us. And our program is going to be 12 hours nonstop from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. That is a 12 hour celebrations which we are having together. Great regards to Honorable Prime Minister of India and Education Minister of India. After a long gap, the new education policy in the thick of pandemic on 29th of July, we had basically the new education policy. 1947, India got independence. The first restructuring and the policy, national policy on education was in 1968. Next was in 1986, 1992 minor changes, and thereafter the new education policy. Ladies and gentlemen, what was the scenario on 15th August 1947? That's what we wish to touch with each other. India had 19 universities, 400 schools, and 5,000 students. This was the condition when India got independent in 1947, and we have come a long way. When we today talk about India has got 1,028 universities, 40,000 colleges, 15 lakh schools, and 31.5 crore students. But still, as India is an agro-based economy, major chunk, major role, so rural areas are still very important. 60.53 colleges are still located in rural areas, and additionally, 11.4% colleges are exclusively for women in India. Women empowerment is very important. This is the game changer, the new education policy. Once it gets implemented, because the coding is coming from the sixth class onward, vocational, skills, competencies, creativity, collaborative, all that is coming right from sixth class. In graduation, you can walk out from the college after one year with a certificate, if you have got some other assignment and you have got a credit banking, you can come back within the next two years, no problems. If you want to walk out after two years, you get diploma. You want to walk out after three years, you get degree. If you want to become now teacher in India, in the new education policy, the beard is going to be for four years. 
the other day it was so scintillating and soothing asha bhosle ji the playback singer giving a call to the honorable prime minister and the education minister that i am so happy that now arts commerce and science compartments have been removed in the new education policy the children those are studying science they can take music the children those are studying commerce they can take fashion designing and visibly more than 130 vocationals are getting introduced in the education system agar koi humse puche moglo aur angrezo ke aane se pehle bharat kaisa tha kaise thi wo values और एथिक लेड प्रैक्टिकल एजुकेशन पहली से लेकर और पंद्रहवीं सेंचुरी तक क्या सत्ताईस परसेंट जीडीपी वर्ल्ड की इंडिया से आती थी क्या आसाम मैक्सिमम कंट्रीब्यूट करता था जो नॉर्थ ईस्ट का हिस्सा है व्हाट इंडिया वाज एंड ऑल दीज यूनिवर्सिटीज व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट एंड व्हेन यू लुक टूवर्ड्स दोज खंडर्स ऑफ नालंदा वॉट हैपन हाउ इट वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड Nine months, the library and the research material was burning over there. Everything was destroyed. Where from world? The whole world, thirty-one countries, people were studying at that point of time. Ten thousand students, two thousand acharyas. You name a subject, and that was taken over there. That was the scenario. And here is the man who created destruction. in the entire indian education ecosystem when he went on 2nd february 1835 to british parliament and he told if we want to rule india then we got to destroy their education ecosystem ladies and gentlemen if you want to finish anybody just spoil their education and you can rule over our chamber has come a long way last 26 years in a very humble way we have contributed something in a very very humble steps whatever we can do from our side and the holistic education when we talk about is the integral part of it dr as marwaha from los angeles from malibu under his leadership couple of things started that time he was president of india america dental association thereafter came we had uh, current sing thakral that is from singapore thakral group of companies we got professor satinder dhiman from the woodbury university we got people like ar kohli sahab and then of course couple of other presidents and now at present our president is from uh, thailand from bangkok who comes from the hospitality industry and last year what has happened to the services sector we all know during corona virus every sunday morning we have taken a pledge because now professor satinder dhiman ji being a patron to the chamber we have taken a pledge till the time jab tak jeevan hai jab tak swas hai hamari journey rahegi vidya se adhyatam vidya ki aur every sunday morning indian standard time 9:30 am to 11 am one and a half hour we talk about shrimad bhagavad gita and 10 principal upanishads with professor satinder dhiman ji from woodbury university from burbank california ladies and gentlemen ancient values and our ethics our heritage our culture our art craft whatever we can talk about all that being taken into integral part sanskrit is which has been considered by the whole world and where all the people those are talking with artificial intelligence augmented reality internet of things they all are telling that sanskrit is the most uh, scientific language for algorithms when we talk about our computers so we are proud that professor satinder dhiman ji is now the patron of the chamber and we are moving in that particular journey further ladies and gentlemen northeast part of india eight beautiful states to which the honorable prime minister calls ashta lakshmi these states have got a boundary with the asean 10 beautiful countries because indian culture moved with the heritage with buddhism and everything to 650 million population so every sunday at 3 pm we have got a special program india 
ASEAN Joint Collaboration, MSMEs. What is the purpose of education? Whenever I go through the entire literature which has been given by the policymakers, and one of them to whom I lost just last to last month, Sir Ken Robinson. If you read his books, his literature, do schools kill creativity? Education, Death Valley, couple of other things, you know, which he has authored. And if you see his programs, he says there are four purposes of education, economic, cultural, social, and personal. So thereby, every child, whosoever is taking education, if you bring some economic activity to your civilization, whether you are going for startup, you're going for stand-up, you want to have your own venture, you want to become entrepreneur or self-employed. So micro, small, and medium enterprise business, 90% plus business is all when you talk about that's a micro, small. Now, when you're doing so much and when the world is passing through so many difficulties, your health and wellness is very important. So with lots of acharyas and Ayurveda specialists, we organized almost 25 webinars every Saturday, special program on yoga, meditation, naturopathy, Ayurveda, organic, plantation, whatsoever. Because what you put inside your body, your thought process moves accordingly. Thereafter, Shivan Ki Puri Yatra Hamare Sola Sanskaro Mein Hai. Garbadan Se Lekar Anteshti Tak Javam Chalte Hai. और इसकी एक सीरीज चल रही है जिसमें सारे के सारे जितने प्रोसेस हैं हमारी लाइफ के दैट आल्सो इज कमिंग 16 संस्कार सीरीज ऑफ आईसीएसआई टुडे इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डे एंड इट्स सच अ गुड फॉर्च्यून दैट डॉक्टर हांडा इज विद अस फ्रॉम ऑस्ट्रेलिया लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन टुडे इज अ बर्थडे ऑफ स्वामी विवेकानंद जी 11th ऑफ सितंबर 1893, when I look back, a gentleman 127 years back in Chicago, when he went to the post, you know, the podium, the rostrum, and he started the first sentence over there, sisters and brothers of the universe. And everybody came on the edge of their seats and everybody stood up and thunder of clapping for this particular man in the saffron. That is the birthday today. We all are celebrating. So we have got a very special talk today, channelizing youth power for nation building in the afternoon, Indian Standard Time at two o'clock. Then our waste is our resource, right from our kitchen, from our residence, from our area, horticulture, whatever we talk about. There's a great work every Sunday in the afternoon at 12.30, waste management, that is such Punjab talk, which we talk about. And children, they need pocket money. Social media, they will not get away from. They want to make best use of whatsoever gadgets are available. So we are channelizing the youth. Okay, you want to use your mobile? Okay, use it. No problems. Why don't you use it for productive purpose? Why do you want to ask the pocket money from your parents? For that matter, we are teaching them. We are sharing information with them. Every app, whatever is available, how it can become your pocket money so that you utilize the gadget for productive purpose. Don't ask money from your parents. During this pandemic, ladies and gentlemen, 12 hour beaming by our chamber from morning 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Global skills and competencies focus on soft skills and management skills. This is the first finishing school of India for service industry in a very humble way, brought by our chamber, focusing on soft skills and life skills, etiquette, manners, gesture, body language, personality, creativity, collaborative, your interpersonal skills, your critical thinking, logical thinking, analytical thinking, whatever you can think on this and your values and your ethics in life, all that being in grilled. This is the canvas of ICSI. We are organizing 30 webinars per week, trying and reaching world over. Every Saturday, Sunday in the evening, we have got a special webinar 
with the non-resident Indian, Indian diaspora from the world over. That is the way we are moving in a humble way. Youth empowerment is very important. Teachers empowerment is very, very important. Your education got to be relevant to our day-to-day -day life. Your startups, entrepreneurships, MSME is very important. During this pandemic, we have collected data from 152 countries. Next global crisis are going to be on water sharing. There is a next crisis. It is already on the doorsteps. And all the kind of uh, water reservoirs and water blockages, whenever you can wish, you can flood a country. Or whenever you want, you can drought a country. All the saluscapes which are coming up, water is going to be the next crisis. Who can save? Our ladies can save. They can play a very important role. Every drop of the water right at residence, right in schools, colleges, universities, polytechnics, ITIs, your skill centers, your working places, your public places, every drop of water, women plays a very important role. This is my rooftop, ladies and gentlemen. Right in my residence rooftop, I'm having my own organic farming. I've not purchased a single vegetable in the last nine months from the market. I'm growing my own vegetable and up heran ho jayenge. Adrak, lasun or piyaj. In tino ki kathi ek sabji kha kar dekhiye. You will not have any difficulty, any problem. If I am talking to you at the age of 72, with the energy of 20-year-old boy, this is all what I put inside my body that is very important. Health and wellness, positive thought, all the time think for the welfare of the humanity. Our chamber till 31st of December, the golden triangle, the world order, the new order, the new normal. It is not Delhi, Agra, Jaipur. It is basically your basic food, your basic health, your basic education, and the world is no more B2B, business to business. It is back to basics of life, sustainable development. What shall the human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve? Let's come together. Let's make education relevant. Global confluence of the educators, motivators, technocrats, counselors, wellness experts, corporate, government administrator, decision maker, all of us, we are together in this beautiful journey. And a pleasure to have this morning, Dr. Manoj Chandra Handaji, the principal education officer, learning, teaching, and leading coordinator, New South Wales Department of Education, teaching quality, and impact directorate from Sydney, all the way the live coming with us from Australia. We extend him a very hearty welcome, ladies and gentlemen. He has formerly served as a chief education officer and a school development officer in the department. He has published papers and presented internationally on the education of the gifted learners, leadership, creativity, and innovation. He worked as an academic partner of the 21st Century Competencies Project at an international school of Geneva, Switzerland, where he led workshops on design thinking, entrepreneurship, and innovation education. In 2012, Dr. Manoji was recognized as one of the top 100 most influential people in Sydney by the National Daily, the Sydney Morning Herald. In 2016, he was recognized for excellence in higher degree research by the Faculty of the Human Sciences, Macquarie University, Sydney. He was selected for the Smart Teacher Research Award 2016 by the Teachers Guild of New South Wales for his doctoral research. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in extending very hearty welcome with a pleasure, Dr. Manoj Chandra Handachi. It's indeed a great, great pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for being with us. And thank you very much for sharing your vision and thought process. I want to make you more comfortable. So I will come just next to you to give you brotherly strength and to learn more from you, learn more from you. So with these words, ladies and gentlemen, we bring right before us, we are thankful to Dr. Manoj Chandra Handaji that he's joining us from Sydney. It's a beautiful country. I don't want to talk about yesterday's cricket that we will not talk. <laughs> we will go to the subject straight away. <laughs> so today, Let's take your vision. Let's take your journey. 
and share your heart, your soul, your spirit, and whatever you would like to tell Indian education system, Indian educators, India's youth, India's parents, whatever you would like to share your long journey. We want to learn. We want to have the best of wisdom of yours this morning and this afternoon with you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sharma ji, for your kind introduction, for the very inspirational uh, sweep that you have shared with us all about the wondrous things that uh, ICSI are doing. In particular, I'm drawn to the energy, the passion, the excitement that you share. Uh, I think it'll be remiss of me not to say that you are a difference maker at many levels. And uh, I think uh, organizations like yours are really making a difference for the greater good of our Indian youth. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Satinder Dhiman uh, for the opportunity to connect with you. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank Chitraji for her assistance and support. So uh, colleagues uh, um, around the world, welcome. And uh, also, can I take this opportunity to wish you all a vibrant Punjabi Parvasi Divas tomorrow. Uh, I hope uh, the celebrations go well and resonate around the world. Uh, talking about what Sharmaji said, in fact, uh, the media reported today, what an amazing, laudable work Indian cricket team have done. And they have done the, achieved the impossible, which is to, uh, uh, attain this draw after more than 130 overs and beyond. So look, uh, uh, wherever we go, wherever Indians go, they sincerely want to make a difference. Uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to share my uh, presentation with you all, and I'll take this opportunity to uh, uh, just uh, stop my video so you can focus on the presentation and enjoy. And uh, then I will turn it back on to seek uh, any questions that you may have. Thank you. So. Please advise uh, Sharmaji if you are able to see my screen. Perfectly fine, sir. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Unleash yeah. the power of possibility. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so. I'm going to go here and this time, um, colleagues today in this session, I'm going to propose that developing creative mindset is really about making an active choice. It doesn't happen by, by chance. And uh, it's taking me for some strange reason. No worries, no worries. It takes, uh, because it's all technical gadgets, no worries. Yes. No worries. Ladies and gentlemen, meanwhile, those have joined us now, world over, I wish to share with all of you that we are in conversation with Dr. Uh, Manu Chandra uh, Handaji. He is joining us from Sydney. And uh, today's uh, vision he is going to give us creativity by choice. All of us, we will take on that. And this is coming from New South Wales Department of Education, all the way from Sydney, Australia. Meanwhile, I wish to share with all of you that tomorrow we are celebrating uh, Punjabi Parvasi Divas. Yes, creative by choice, not by chance. Yes. Thank you. So colleagues, uh, I'm going to start with William Blake. Uh, and uh, he had once remarked, to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. In fact, creativity is the natural mode of humanity. 
we have powerful imaginations. We have the power to create our own biographies with the choices that we make, with the circumstances that we respond to, and with the paths that we take. Now, there are two standard approaches to learning. One is the top down. I do remember my time when I was in India, uh, lectures and lectures for instruction, the sage on the stage to instruct students, and the bottom of method where repeated practice, children are subjected to this low grade clerical work hour after hour and uh, spoon feeding in the long run teaches them nothing, but may I say the shape of the spoon. In fact, uh, when we teachers complain the children are fidgety in the classroom, they are not suffering from any psychological inhibition. They are suffering from childhood. So there is a third alternative. And Professor Ellen Langer in a, this powerful, the power of mindful learning calls it sideways learning. Now, what is that? It's about maintaining that state where we are open to possibilities, where we are alive to different contexts, where we are quite conscious of the distinctions and the differences around us. And we are comfortable with the multiple perspectives. Let me share with you this image of ingenious arrangement of 848 knives and spoons and forks. And in fact, this shadow picture of a motorbike that Shigeo Fukuda as a shadow artist had created, surely you would agree with me. He imagined it in his mind in the first place and then meticulously stuck each piece of cutlery into position. Colleagues, it all begins with imagination. Imagination is a festival to the creative mind. In fact, on the ICI spectrum, imagination, creativity, innovation, it is imagination which is foundational. Without a robust imagination, there can be no creativity, no innovation. Sharma Sahibji was talking about uh, Mahatma Gandhi earlier. In fact, Gandhiji first imagined the creative vision of nonviolent resistance, the Satyagraha. And then he launched his innovate, innovative campaign against the British Raj. Martin Luther King first imagined an inclusive world where the people will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And then he launched the civil rights movement. So my colleagues, imagination is the source of all divergent thinking and it demands intentional, mindful cultivation. Now, that means if I, as I move further, creativity, what is creativity? It is about generating novel ideas, which are also useful, which are appropriate, which are relevant for a given problem, situation or context. And innovation is when you apply those ideas and produce them in a way that they bring some value. In fact, uh, Sir Ken Robinson uh, talks about innovation as applied imagination and innovation as applied creativity. So colleagues, uh, over time, I have developed a, a framework that I'm gonna share with you I've called it learner-centered creative pedagogy framework. On the left-hand side, 
you see creative practice, which really relates to teacher pedagogy. And on the right hand side, you see an arc, creative learning, which relates to student learning. In between, there is a bi-directional arrow, which uh, really denotes interactive zone of discovery. And that's the creative process when teachers and students connect with each other. And as a result, it leads to what I call creative outcomes. Now surely friends, you can all see a smiley face on the screen. Uh, when I look at the uh, creative practice, it has got four areas in there. One is adaptive practice. When experts view their expertise as a work in progress, they're learners at heart. Uh, I would be touching upon creative habits of mind in a minute, but surely uh, we require intrinsic motivation, not extrinsic rewards. And it's about creating the, the climate, the learning environment, which supports unusual ideas and provides freedom, freedom of thought and choice. And uh, when I will be looking at the uh, creative learning, I would be talking about how do you pose questions? How do you make connections? How do students uh, tolerate ambiguity? Exploring alternatives, and then how do you move from divergent thinking to convergent thinking when they start critically reflecting upon this? So I'll be teasing out uh, certain elements from this uh, framework. And I'm gonna talk about very briefly about the creative process in the middle. Now, creative process is about four things. You imagine, you visualize, pose questions, you play with ideas, you develop ideas. And there are four areas I'll touch upon, fluency and flexibility, um, originality and elaboration. And then from there, we move on to the convergent thinking, uh, divergent thinking, which is about evaluation. And, uh, and then of course, uh, acting upon what we have developed. Now, I was talking earlier about creative practice, which is uh, what the teachers bring and how they shape creative habits of mind. Now, I've got this acronym that I've designed uh, really sharing uh, wide literature, creativity literature with you. Um, so first thing is the curiosity. How do we, inspire this relentless quest for new learning. Children with creative habits of mind take risks. Hey, encourage them to have the courage to stumble and then get back again. It's about embracing ambiguity, uncertainty. I remember uh, uh, walking into my classroom once and uh, uh, stood in front of them and said, well, boys and girls, the greatest good and the greatest evil have come from speeches. How can this be true? And that led to such a passionate discourse in the classroom. So posing, posing paradoxical uh, questions and statements and encouraging children to uh, uh, look at ambiguous, ambiguous uh, ideas. The fourth one is about being focused, being in the flow, being attentive and being adaptable, having that uh, agile mindset. And beyond that, of course, these creative thinkers think big. They think outside the box and they experiment. They play with ideas and actions and possibilities. So that's the kind of uh, creative habits of mind that we teachers, we educators need to make sure that we are ensuring our young people um, around the world in our classrooms uh, are able to embrace. 
Now, let me take you one step further here. And I'd like to talk to you about this uh, Zen Buddhist term, Shoshin. Now, Shoshin stands for a beginner's mindset. Now, sometimes as we learn more and gain expertise, that can create closed minds, mindsets. Whereas the beginners do not have any of that. They are not aware of any biases uh, that can stand in the way of a new a good idea. They are open, they are bright, they are chirpy, they are enthusiastic. They want to embrace fresh perspectives. They want to learn something new. They're eager. There is a lack of any uh, preconception. That's what a child does. And so these children, that childlike a beginner's mindset means we withhold judgment. Uh, often in the classroom, uh, an idea comes out and straight away, hands go up, oh, it's not gonna work. No, 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 hold your judgment, hold your judgment. So we need to have that mindset where we are able to observe, engage without any value judgments. We are questioning everything. We question the things that you think um, we already understand. It's the why, asking why. And multiple times, we become truly uh, the real explorers and curious thinkers. And we find patterns, patterns, the threads and the themes that emerge when the children, when the peers are engaging in interactions. We are open and we are active listeners. In fact, Shoshin, can I just say, generates that childlike, sense of wonder. Now, uh, let me ex ex explore this further. Let me share with you Einstein's first wonder. Now, when he was five years old, he was quite sick in his bed and uh, his father brought him a, a compass, a small compass. It was intended as a, an amusing toy but it turned out to be the first miracle of his life, the first wonder of his life. A later uh, Einstein wrote, um, this needle, I was fascinated because there was something in the void which was gripping the iron needle. It always pointed in the same direction. So the child got very curious and uh, his romance, with the wonder, with imagination, started there and then, right in the childhood. So Einstein's interest in the universe and in nature, particularly space and time, originated from the first wonder, that small magnetic compass. The question I ask you all my colleagues, what sort of wonder do you uh, incite in your classrooms when you, want, when you walk in? Uh, let, me, let me share with you uh, this Dutch girl, uh, a 12-year-old, Emma. Now, for her, this is not necessarily a light bulb. And as I share with you, the possibilities that Emma conjured, I would like you to just start thinking what else could it be, my colleagues? I give you about uh, five seconds to consider as I pause. Well, at least uh, you might have had at least one or two ideas. I've not given you much time. And that's another thing, the tyranny of time. Uh, we do need a lot of incubation uh, period in our classrooms, but surely uh, you have reflected uh, a little bit by now. Uh, let me share with you what she did. For her, it was a lollipop, a smiley face. It was a bicycle. For her, it was a flower, a whisk, a pear, uh, a doorbell and so on. And by the way, 
in my classrooms, I remember I would give them, and I'm going to show you uh, more examples later. Uh, these children would come up because that uh, imagination has been kindled in their hearts and minds. That's what educators do. I call them imagineers because imagineers see many things. And I propose humbly that we need to awaken those creative possibilities in our students' mindscape. Uh, in fact, how often, at least I know about myself when I was studying, uh, as, and I, I can't speak about, I've been, look, I've been away from my lovely motherland for more than 30 years now, but I remember these kind of questions that were constantly asked, which started with the what, how many, what caused. Uh, imagine we were to disrupt this territory. Imagine we were to ask them questions starting with what if or why, rather than asking what is photosynthesis, what would occur if one step in the photosynthesis process was changed? Rather than asking what caused the practices that led to the Kisan Indolan in India, or to the treatment to the untouchables, or to the stolen generation in India, what, what, if, what if there was no difference in people's skin color, which events of the past may have been, may have been avoided. Uh, colleagues, such questioning breaks open the stagnant, hardened shells of the present. These questions open doors for tantalizing possibilities in the future. In fact, uh, I remember the day I uh, walked into the classroom and I posed this question to them. Hey, what if we had seven fingers on each hand? And uh, I knew I was uh, entering into the territory of disruptive questioning. I knew that uh, deep down at this uh, disruptive questioning, starting with what if, does not reshuffle the cards, it actually creates new cards. Uh, it becomes the guiding motive of creative mindsets. So what did I hear? I heard Mr. Chandra Hand, uh, would we have two finger opposing thumbs on each hand? If we did, would we have a better grasp on things? What if we could name our fingers after the days or the weeks? And if we are clumsy, we would say, sorry, I am all weekends. And there were the questions, uh, children who asked me about how it would affect the sports. And one quipped, well, can you imagine the players after a good game saying, give me seven, give me 14, and that raises an interesting point, uh, uh, my colleagues. Maybe our number system would be base 14 instead of base 10. Would there be more people in the jewelry business, for God's sake? What would happen to the piano music? What would happen to the hand tools? What would happen to the computer keyboards? The questions kept coming to me. It's because we, as educators, we activate their disruptive, think, disruptive thinking because we are fostering creativity by choice, not by chance. And we are encouraging the art of looking sideways. So when the problems would emerge in the classroom, I would say, um, how, what if you were Gandhiji? How would this person solve your problem? What about Carl Jung or Nelson Mandela? What about Leonardo da Vinci? How would da Vinci solve this problem? What about Socrates or, or Walt Disney? In fact, uh, one student uh, designed uh, a school for me that this is how Walt Disney would uh, design the schooling in Australia. Uh, and of course, what about you? 
what if you became the idea? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, one of those days, uh, I was thinking about this question. What if there was mobile phone during the time of Isaac Newton? Well, maybe I wonder what would have been the outcome in relation to noticing the concept of gravity. In fact, my children would uh, in classrooms, whether primary or secondary, I've been, by the way, I'm a secondary tertiary uh, educator, but I have taught in primary settings as well. And I would ask them questions. These are the questions children have designed. What if the human life expectancy were 200 years? What if you looked in the mirror and you became two of you? What if people carried their homes and property on their backs like turtles? What if, look at this one, what if cats sold life insurance to birds? What a delightful what if questioning. And what if we could smell people's thoughts and feelings? Now, now uh, you may say, uh, Dr. Chandra Hand, uh, this is, uh, where is it going? Well, uh, my students would come up with this questioning and they would then ask to trace the reasonable and the logical consequences that would follow. So for example, think of the good and the bad and the interesting consequences of a statement that you might select. So colleagues, I'm not gonna to go to the heartbeat of creativity. This is really the crux where uh, it all boils down to, you know, like heartbeats and breathing, creative thinking has a natural rhythm of its own. It expands and it contracts. It diverges, it converges. Uh, Guilford uh, called this phenomenon divergent and convergent thinking, the yin and the yang. Um, now, to enhance creative output, we should consciously separate the two. And often people don't do that. The moment uh, children or the students in the classrooms uh, or your peers start coming up with any uh, new divergent ideas, straight away, hands go up. Oh, that's not going to work. Hang on, hang on. Hold your judgment. So... Divergent thinking really is about generating lots and lots of ideas, what everybody thinks of. And as the ideas keep coming on, 15, 20, you know, as they keep only towards the end, at the margins, some good original novel ideas will start coming up. You know, divergent thinking is almost like uh, standing at the front of an open fridge, okay? And considering all the things and all the permutations, combinations of the things you could possibly eat for lunch. And convergent thinking, however, is about you grab the ham and the cheese and the unexpected mango chutney at the end. That's what it is, and you close the door. See, the divergent thinking really is about striving for quantity, making connections, and convergent thinking is about seeking, uh, being deliberate when you are choosing the right ideas. So here's a framework, colleagues, a creativity tool that I strongly encourage that you use in your classrooms where uh, you actually uh, use what I call four models. Uh, fluency, flexibility, originality, and exploration. So for example, let me share an example. Um, list, uh, let's look at the fluency. What is fluency? The quantity, lots and lots of ideas. No questions asked, don't stop. Ideas are coming. Um, flexibility, different kinds of ideas, different categories of ideas. And then will emerge some new ideas and then we'll fill in the rich detail. So for example, list all the kinds of things that involve the concept of justice. List things that can affect or influence election. 
list all the ways to solve this problem, this problem that we have, and you can name a problem. Um, for flexibility, uh, now you want a different direction. For example, you may say, retell the story um, of, of mice and men from a different character's point of view. Uh, create a new ending when I go to originality. Create a new ending for this, uh, this novel, as I said, of mice and men. Um, a cuckoo's, cuckoo's bird, and, and, and you name it. Create a new ending for this Shakespearean play. And then add to, build on, expand on, only after some good ideas uh, have emerged. Let me share with you an example. Uh, and this is really on the premise that nothing is more dangerous than having just one idea, okay? Nothing is more dangerous. I remember one day I, uh, you know, walked into the, my classroom, I took my jacket off and uh, I was fumbling for my hanger and students were waving hanger at me. Sir, sir, today we want to use the hanger. I said, okay, let's do something with the hanger. What do you think a simple, humble coat hanger could be used for? And look at what this young girl did. Sharon Mo, year eight, I want to acknowledge her. This is her work, a gifted child, of course, it's a gifted setting, uh, the top 1% in Sydney, uh, in Australia. And she came up with lots of cat big categories um, from hammer to camera to birds to marshmallow. And then she came up with the practical uses. And I'm gonna read aloud a couple of them for you to how this young girl could see how a coat hanger could be used. It could be used as a perch and play area for a bird, an implement to roast the marshmallows over fire. It could be used as a frame to make mold for a coat hanger tiling pattern and so on. Look at this, it, she didn't stop. There were, my goodness, about 50, 60, uh, you know, possibilities that she came up with a coat hanger. Um, she talked about uh, the uh, device which could be attached to the handle to make driving, uh, dragging heavy suitcases easier. Um, uh, it could be straightened and attached to another and used as a tool for underwater exploration. And by the way, I have 30 students. I'm only sharing with you the possibilities of just one child that, uh, that's, that she generated. I'm gonna go further. And this time I'm gonna share with you a second tool which is the use of metaphors, analogical thinking. When something is like blah, because life is like riding an elevator. It's lots of ups and downs. Life is like a room full of open doors, which close sometimes when you grow older. Life is like a poker game. You are deal or you dealt to. Now listen. I want to share with you something really delightful, never shared before this. Uh, uh, I just want to share this with you. I went to my classroom. This is my year at seven this time. And I said to them today, I want to teach you the technique, the tool called Synectics by William Gordon, 1961. He wrote a book called Synectics. And I gave them some steps first. So I want you to uh, please uh, appreciate those steps first as I share with you the outcome. So step one was create, compose, creative analogies on any topic. And the topic I gave them was memories. And then I said, once you have come up with a analogy, change the analogy to a personal analogy. How does it feel to be, for example, a memory is the hope that glistens in our eyes, never fading. A memory is the last glimpse of the soul floating away. So they had wrote about 10, 15, 20 analogies, each child, they, all, they were all wonderful, um, good thinkers, we were working together. And then I said, now change the analogy to personal analogy. What or how does it feel to be the hope that glistens in our eyes. How does it feel to be the last glimpse of the soul floating away? So they started brainstorming words, 
that came to their mind. And then I asked them to join contradictions together. Have a look. So this child, when uh, uh, Ashwin Raghavan was writing analogies and he wrote about 20 of them, and he wrote words like fast and immobility and nervousness and comfort, and he joined the contradiction. William Gordon calls it compressed conflicts because they bring together different elements in search for new ideas, new solutions. Um, and as he was doing it, uh, I asked them to choose one and create another analogy. By the way, this is just brainstorming. I'm not even sharing with you that short story that Ashwin Raghavan wrote to me, uh, wrote for me later. This is brainstorming happening in the classroom. So sorrowful ecstasy, and he wrote this. Sorrowful ecstasy is an old woman celebrating her last birthday. And my friends, he gave me this. A woman celebrating her 100th birthday. Nietzsche, the German philosopher, had once said, one must have creative chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. So uh, I encourage you all to uh, uh, try this, uh, this strategy, uh, synectics, very powerful, and uh, it has really uh, uh, achieved some very powerful results. In fact, in the business world, things like uh, Pringle potato chips and disposable nappies and a space saver Kleenex box, you name it, uh, you know, this, this technique uh, has achieved wonders. And finally, co finally, colleagues, I'm going to show, share with you one more strategy. Look, there are so many, but I chose today in the time that I had uh, uh, three, three creativity tools. Now, this tool, Scamper, in fact, the questions were designed by Alex Osborne in 1953, but it was not until later Bob Eberly, um, who, who came up with the mnemonic scamper, substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to other uses, eliminate, reverse, rearrange. I strongly encourage you. I have yet to see anything around the world which relates to creativity, which doesn't touch one or the other aspects of scamper. In fact, let me, let me commence. Uh, substitute, what could you use instead of it? What could else, what else could work better? Uh, Sharmaji was talking earlier, how he has uh, uh, consistently thought through and substituting things so that uh, his organization could work better. Substituting. Um, here is a question. What would an Egyptian girl think if she time traveled to Delhi for a week in 2020, will write her diary or her postcard back home. Um, I go further. In fact, I was quite inspired to, not, to learn Ratan Tataji uh, observing the plight of a family of four packed onto a single uh, scooter. He ended up substituting that with this uh, uh, nano costing, in my mind, uh, as I understand, uh, around uh, two and a half thousand dollars in India. Uh, what, 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 a, what an amazing, uh, you know, and it emerged through observation. You observe and are on the lookout for uh, substituting them to explore creative possibilities. Um, my colleagues, uh, what about, uh, uh, we go to the second element of scamper. What else could we need at the same time? What could we combine? Um, how could we uh, create a report, um, a narrative in which different ideas uh, could be joined together? How could we write a pictogram, a pictorial representation 
of the word zoom drawn as a rocket. In fact, Picasso, the great artist, used this technique to recombine elements of figures and objects which had uh, uh, been taken apart and, uh, and he created this amazing, uh, amazing artwork. If I go to the third one, which is to adapt, can we pinch from another idea? I can uh, assure you there is nothing really original. We all are standing on the shoulders of each other as we, uh, as we build our ideas. What can we learn, if I may say, from a frog about the development of an amphibious car, if I may ask you all. Uh, colleagues, uh, in fact, uh, Jacuzzi Brothers in 1956, uh, they used to sell water pumps for farm use. And they designed a special whirlpool uh, bath for a treatment for their cousin's arthritis. But it was not until 1968, 12 years later, that uh, Roy Jacuzzi put this context in a, this concept in a different context. What did he do? He put this in the luxury bath market. Bathrooms have never been same again. In fact, if I go further and look at the modify, what can we modify? How could we uh, change a particular text which is quite gloomy to give it a happy ending. How could the school be altered? Um, looking at uh, uh, you know, a creative mindset, perhaps a Disney mindset. What could we do to magnify? Can we enlarge a bit? Can we shrink it a bit? Can we put an idea to other uses? How many uses I already shared with you about uh, that uh, court hanger example, uh, we, we, we all know uh, this uh, humble uh, paper clip was uh, invented in 1899. Uh, gracious, it has not been improved upon since. But have a look, have a look what else could it be? It could be a lock prick, it could be a hook, a earring, a needle, it could be a spring and a toothpick, a key ring or a money clip, a hair clip, an acupuncture needle, the clip for a tie, the slingshot. And by the way, the possibilities are enormous. I'm only sharing with you just, uh, just, a, just a taste of it. Looking to going to the elimination. What would you do to cut out chunks of text to highlight to highlight for others. So haiku, sonnets, for example, are a great example of elimination when it comes to poetry. In fact, uh, on a funny note, uh, and I do see that in India as well, uh, fashion designers uh, for uh, women continue to do this all the time. Um, in fact, what about eliminating the war making functions from a tank? Uh, here is a modernized, uh, modernized tractor. What about rearranging? What about rearranging uh, and uh, uh, reversing when we uh, reverse? And this, this brings me, uh, by the way, I'll go back to the reverse one. Um, this is very important. How many of you foster student voice in your classrooms? How many of you or us have students acting as co-learners. How many of us have students and teachers as collaborators of learning? How many of us give them a chance to look at our work so they can be our teacher too? I remember uh, I walked out in my classroom 2000, very proudly I was sharing and showing them my new website and I had uh, created uh, a text, a web page for each child in my classroom. And as I opened my Google website uh, with my password, I opened it to show what happened on the screen. 
a line popped up and it said, howdy, howdy, Dr. Chandrahand. Somebody had already hacked my website. I was showing them my website and they had already got into it. And you know what? I, I just gave up. I said, hey, can you teach me something? Can you teach me how to create a more secure website so students can teach the teacher? Students can teach themselves. Students can uh, uh, become collaborators uh, you know, in this process. What do those classrooms look like, my colleagues? Have a look, please, on the screen. Uh, uh, there is no front. There is no back in this learning space. There are lots and lots of whiteboards. All furniture is on the wheels. The room can be configured depending on the learning activity. In fact, can I suggest that you do go ahead and create a war zone. In fact, remove status clues. Demolish the sage on the stage effect. Make the room self-authoring where everything is on the wheels. Everything can be hacked. Nothing is precious. Nothing is sacred. So in conclusion, colleagues, I'm going to share with you some final key findings and strategies. Because let us remember, including myself, let us not confine our children to our own learning because they were born in a different time. Let's nurture and inspire their imagination so our young people can write their stories from tomorrow. Let's develop a culture of innovation. Let us establish an expectation for creativity. Hey, let us put on the Pygmalion glasses. Let us expect our students to put on the creative hats. We need to regularly stimulate and reward curiosity. We should foster inventive connections. And I've already shared with you uh, one tool, synectics for that. Let us promote this uh, tolerance for ambiguity. Encourage them to value contradictory uh, and opposing viewpoints. Let us explicitly teach creative thinking strategies in the content of, uh, in the content demands. What does that look like in, in the subject of English, in maths, in geography, in PDHPE, uh, and, and so on. And let us help them uh, ask us open-ended questions. I strongly recommend, please, let us use humor and laughter. Research shows there is a close relationship between the ha-ha of humor and the aha of creativity. Um, and laughter following humor has a liberating effect. It generates a sense of freedom and play, all conducive to creative thinking. And my strategy number nine, if I may share, uh, let's emphasize the process. The joy of the flow of learning has its own rewards. The emphasis on process teaches students that the limits of our capabilities do not exist. That our aspirations are our possibilities. That perseverance is not a long race, but many short races, one after the other. My friends, let us move creativity from the margins into the mainstream curriculum. Let us make schools and colleges and universities oasis of imagination, creativity, and innovation. We need a new renaissance, a new way of thinking. So uh, if, if, if your actions as educators can inspire your students to dream more, to learn more, to do more, to become more. You have become an authentic instrument of unleashing their individual potential. 
and those children, those students will never be the same. Let me finish with the Anais Nin's poem. And the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. My, my colleagues, I propose to you all that the risk of containing creativity is higher than the effort in realizing and cultivating it into creative habits of mind. Let me conclude with Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher who sums up my sentiments best. If I were to wish for anything, I should not wish for wealth and power, but for the passionate sense of what can be, for the eye which ever young and ardent sees the possible. Pleasure disappoints, possibility never. And what wine is more sparkling? What so fragrant, what so intoxicating as creative possibility? My colleagues, let us transform our students into possibility workers. Thank you very much. Wow, what a powerful. <laughs> What a powerful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. It was like a thunderstorm. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. It was such a, such a wonderful, and you talked about creativity and you made everybody so creative. I've taken also all the notes of yours. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. It was something wonderful, amazing very innovative, very creative, out of the box, something altogether, our imagination, our innovation, our creativity, everything what you have given. And the last one which you have given me, oh my God, oh my God. See, because when the pain, when you told, that was something fantastic. Because if it remains in a bud and that kind of a difficulty, it is better to blossom and to just come out over there. Uh, sir, I would like to make a request to you. Could you use that term once again, where you told ha ha and ah ha. <laughs> that you give it to me. That was very interesting. I heard it for the first time in my life. I'm very interested. Uh, let us nurture and inspire their imagination, stimulate and reward curiosity, foster uh, innovative uh, connections. Okay. And then you use use humor and laughter. Yes. It is in the natural way. I keep smiling all the time and laughing. <laughs> I, I found, uh, I found uh, Dr. Sharma, my yeah. best lessons were when children found it play. In the classroom, we were playing with ideas. They were nobody judging anyone. In fact, uh, Sometimes students uh, came up with some very odd ideas, but they were all respectful and they would all laugh with each other rather than at each other. And sometimes uh, I would make mistakes and they will gently point out uh, uh, Mano Chandrahanda now this way. And, and that's okay because we had developed a relationship of co-learners. In fact, uh, one of my research has been about how can we unleash student voice in our classrooms, where I actually use a, a, a different term now. It's about unleashing student agency. Voice is part of that. So when we are uh, creating that, unleashing that, we are not doing things to them, we are doing things with them. So children knew in the classrooms when we will walk in that uh, it is not, oh, this is nine o'clock, let's have creativity, no. It needs to be embedded throughout in our teaching and learning. It's not an add-on. And I hope that my, that was my message that, uh, that uh, people took away today, that uh, how can we embed it, infuse it, so that they become our habits of mind. 
wonderful wonderful i would request you uh, first of all to my thunder of claps for you thank you very much thank you thank you it was awesome it was wonderful and you are quite poetic you take your modulation of the voice so well it was coming so rhythmic and nicely up and downs in the modulation wow that's great you are more poetic you are more poetic okay now uh, i want that one word which you have used i want if you emphasize that we will conclude with that because that is something very important i want that you should elaborate that and what is you use one term right now let us be co learner let us be co learner you use yes. one term right now because the whole education ecosystem is changing what was made during the industrial era that time the requirement supervisor standing in the front seeing and how workers are bringing their work what exactly is the output and all that thank god it is going away at the same time we are yeah. both from the education fraternity let's accept it the children today those are born with the gadgets the latest study which has come which i have read from the hover that shows that today's child who which is born is 136% more creative and uh, curiosity and at the same time facility available because these gadgets they've got so much to give so one point which i would request you just we conclude with that if you can give uh, and if you can emphasize on co learning co learning yes. i would be very keen so uh, look uh, it really uh, stems from uh, my my own learning in my schooling when i was around it was almost uh, you know very teacher centered top down approach to learning almost as if i would hear i was sitting in the classroom and almost uh, this is what i heard uh, boys and girls i have arrived from time to time you will be asked certain questions and i would test you to check how well you have heard me how well you have memorized what i have i have, have been have been saying and that was such a mind numbing experience for me and as i moved on i want you to please know this why it happened children it's the children in this place where i came so i was teaching my my prac teaching my qualification were not recognized and i had to study again in australia and i was doing my practice teaching uh, in a, in a school and uh, once when i proposed something the student said to me we don't agree we don't agree i said excuse me what is going on here they don't agree with me and they had the audacity to tell me that and i was used to lecturing uh, lecturing in a big hall where children will call tall and uh, walk away and that gave me pause and i was teaching i still remember sharma ji i was teaching shakespeare's uh, 12th night and uh, as they as i started with the scene 2 uh, and i'd been doing that for 3 days and they said to me can you please stop translating shakespeare for us uh, i said but you have been listening to my translation i'm trying to help you uh they said to me yeah 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 we could see you were so excited so we let you be and uh, then uh, one of the child children this is year 8 said to me i am interested in freudian interpretation of the scene you can imagine sharma sir my feet my legs trembling beginning to tremble and uh, the other child said almost sensing my desperation uh this student said yes 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 and i am interested in jungian archetypes of of the scene i can assure you that night i was awake and preparing my lesson so that gave me some pause and when i uh, contacted uh, gifted children for my doctoral research i had uh, 38 children and i took my i took my uh, you know whole uh, instrument my questions blah and i said uh, i would like you to disseminate to the to your schools and uh, help me so they looked at the questions and they laughed they said we can do better than this <laughs> 
So uh, one of them said, uh, how about we help you design questions? And uh, you are so, so humble. You're so humble. You're so nice. You're so natural. You're so yeah. true to yourself. Uh, God yeah. bless you. God bless so, you. So, yeah. so that's how, and they, they, they gave a question, how can we make learning fun? I went away and I want you to know in my PhD doctoral thesis, uh, the instrument was co-designed with my students, uh, disseminated by the students. They interviewed all teachers. I did not interview a single teacher. <laughs> and I am very proud of the fact. In fact, uh, in fact uh, people used to say, what is it? What have you done? Uh, I said, no, I am not the biggest bludger in the world. I can assure you, I genuinely believe in the power of, uh, and that's what core learning is about, where you share your authority, your power, where you are able to say to the child, I am a learner like you. Perhaps uh, there is something I have missed that uh, you could tell me better. Can I say this, Sharma Saha? that students, students are the best witnesses of their own learning. And we need to understand this message. They are the best witnesses of their own learning. Wow. We, need to, we need to embrace that. And uh, I found uh, my learning, my teaching uh, actually got enriched uh, as I put on that creative mindset. In fact, I will tell you this as well. Uh, when I was uh, in my last years of my teaching, before I went on to the department, uh, people would come in, they could not find me. I was always behind. So children in the front were co-teaching their lessons with me. I would write a question at night. So I'm giving an example, I'll write a question on Hamlet and like a Wikipedia in the morning, my whole question has been transformed. It is not the question I gave them. And they made it more rich, more complex, more. So core learning really means not, um, not uh, lip sympathy. It means co-planning. They become co-planners, uh -huh. co-designers, co-designers. Uh -huh. They become co-thinkers. Mm -hmm. uh, they become co-deliverers. Oh, they, yeah. become, they become co-evaluators and they become co-reflectors. So. Oh. Uh, look, I have not, uh, there's a proper framework that I've developed on this. And this is really emergent based on my own firsthand experience that we sometimes don't give our children. Gift. We need to honor that. And we can only honor that if we put on the shoshin, the beginner mindset that I am a learner on a journey with you. You are I so hope true. I, I hope uh, this gives you sense. You are, this you are so is, true. You are so yeah. true. You are so true. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Sir, one more point which, which basically troubles my mind. Uh, you know, we discuss something. It doesn't matter what you know. It matters to whom you know. We laughed over that <laughs> statement also. Now let's move ahead on that. Digital way blended lay, uh, way, flip learning, outside classroom learning, practical learning, life learning, education related to my day-to-day -day living, my life, my, my thought, my ethos, everything. Now, what is this coining when we say, when we say the teachers will now will be facilitators. When I use that term facilitator, now, I'm asking heart to heart to you. Does child really need that facilitation from me? 30% parents in America have decided post COVID that they are going to have a home learning for children. They will not send their children to schools. 11 million girls are getting dropped out from this post COVID because of a couple of circumstances, economic, social, couple of other things, whatever we take. Sir, what is, we are, teachers are going to be facilitators. Now, I want to educate, I want to learn because you have done so much of work on it. 
and uh, i'm i'm blessed this morning that you gave such a wonderful input co planner co thinker co deliverer co designer co reflector co evaluator i'm a good student i have noted down everything sir <laughs> <laughs> now you tell me sir what is the term called when we say teachers are now going to be facilitator because mm -hmm. teacher ego is uh, i'm i'm sorry uh, i don't know i'm talking in my own perspective we are not ready to accept it that certain places child because of technology because of information in my school time i required information i don't require information now it is overflowing it is over flooding please guide me on that what is that term facilitator yeah so there are lots of things you have raised here uh let me let me establish one thing please with you and share this with you uh, really it's uh, really emerging from very well known research from professor john hetty h a w t i e uh who uh, conducted the meta analysis not just analysis but meta analysis of many many you know uh, thousands of researchers and uh, the point that emerged from that uh, you know analysis was that teachers remain first and foremost the most fundamental influence uh, who can bring uh, who can make a difference to child's learning outcomes these terms that you're talking about they are cosmetic terms for, for, for let's call it facilitators let he calls them that teachers are not the sages on the stages and not the facilitators he calls them activators of learning they activate learning uh, we are we are now activators of learning not facilitators of learning uh, by activating that curiosity that wonder that imagination that innovative mindset um what we are doing is we are becoming dr sharma expert questioners not answer providers and that's the fundamental difference i learned in my childhood when i was there in my beautiful mother hand mother hand i was all the time trying to show how well i know the shape of the spoon that's how well i was rewarded because spoon feeding was so important i had to do the rote learning and i'm not being derogatory i say this very humbly that there used to be strikes in my college where i used to teach just because the questions have been different to the end of the chapter and we will go on strike because this is not the question we were had prepared for it is because because in those days the expectation from children was that whatever teacher teaches is the word of god and uh, and therefore that sage on the stage model obviously went and slowly the people started shifting and they started using the terms facilitators but that also doesn't do justice to the work of teachers i can i can say this with the, my own personal experience having taught in gifted settings in uh, for 10 years uh, in a in a great school uh, teachers kids would tell me i'm talking here year 12 uh, you know 17 year olds who were at, who's now at, uh, practicing doctors lawyers uh, the top 1% uh, of the of uh, australian they would say uh, mr chandrahanda i would not have achieved this outcome without a teacher a teacher and they acknowledge that so what we do need is a shift in the mindset not in leaders dr sharma we need a mindset paradigm mindset shift among leaders this is about leadership and i'm not not talking here educational leadership i'm talking political leadership as well where you know in a countries like finland where teachers must have uh, you know a research a masters even to become you know there it's the most prized profession higher and above than medicine because the whole society including leaders 
value teachers. Wow. And they don't, they're not very highly paid either, yeah. but it's the value you accord. Yeah. So I think it's a mindset uh, you know, issue, but more importantly, what value as a society we accord. Mm. And to answer to your question, I don't see that a facilitation role. I always will see teachers having a prominent role in the education of children. However, the role will not be about rote learning or what I've taught you, you must give. The role is about inspiring young men and women to become, as I was saying to you earlier, uh, men and women of wisdom. Whatever gifts and talents that they have developed, they need to learn how can I use my gifts, my talents for the greater good of society. Uh, so look, uh, uh, for now, uh, the, the term that I use is certainly an activator. In fact, I have taken it one level beyond, and I think it's not just being activator. My term is about being co-learners. That is why you saw uh, my paper was about learner-centered creativity learner-centered creative pedagogy. So when we have a learner orientation, and I'm talking here, learner-centered politicians, learner-centered educational leaders, learner-centered teachers, that is when learning becomes the focus, the goal, and the outcomes are inevitable after that. Wow, 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 so well said. So well said, so well said. Our deepest gratitude and thanks to you this morning, Dr. Manoj Chandra Handaji. It is a treat, it's a pleasure, and it is a treat to soothing ears, eyes, heart, mind, spirit. So much you have given. I think your passion speaks the way you deliver. You are hardcore grilled into basically <laughs> and I, I think there's so much to learn this morning. I become more humble. I become more humble. There was so much of learning from you. We wish to learn in future as well. Remain in touch with you. And thank you very much for sparing your most precious time and to come with us and to share this information this morning and your views, your expertise, your inputs, and all, all and something very interesting, your research done with the students and all that was interesting part, very interesting part. Thanks you know, a sir, lot. I'm so uh, grateful. Uh, allow, yeah. allow me to say uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my learning with you and with the audience out there. I humbly submit uh, it's all about learner-centered mindset. Wow. So thank you. Thank wow. you once again. Thank you, sir. Wish you a great evening in Australia. So green morning, green afternoon and green evening to all my brothers and sisters across the world in different countries, different continents. Thank you very much. And look Thank forward to having you. another session with Dr. Manoj Chandra Handaji in near future. What a powerful, valuable, creative, innovative, collaborative and something futuristic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.